Well, hello everybody. What you are looking at is the box to a Can-Am Fire Angel model FA-1 smoke alarm. Now this technically isn't a newly acquired unit in my collection. I've actually had this since December of last year, but um, never really got around to making a formal video of it. So that is what I am going to be doing today. Now, initially, um, you might recognize this unit or even the box to it. Um, be, and that is because uh, two other collectors in the community have these as well. Um, those collectors being BANF Vintage and N Lind. I am now the third person to own one of these. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much besides the fact that me, Ben, and Nathaniel own these. Um, there really is not a lot of information that can be found about these units or even about the company that made these units. They are incredibly obscure. Now, um, from what I know about these units, um, they were made from the mid to late 70s. And as you can see, they were distributed by Can-Am Electronics Corporation. Now, when I tried looking up Can-Am, um, I could not find, like I said, I could not find anything about them. I tried looking up these units on newspapers.com, which is probably like the hugest archive of like vintage smoke alarms you could find. Um, couldn't find anything about them on there either. So that might just go to show how obscure these are. Um, and from what I know, they these were made in Hong Kong, I believe. So, um, yeah, let's just go ahead and, um, open this thing up and, uh, take a look at the unit. Uh, first, uh, well, for that, I'll show you guys the box. There's the front of the box here, um, which I'm sure, you know, you've probably seen throughout the video because I've had it sitting right here. Um, there's the Fire Angel logo. Um, I quite like the logo. Um, it's, has kind of a neat little kind of cursive font to it. Um. <laughs> Oh man, I'm kind of out of things to say. Um, but there's the front of the box there. Um, you can see there's a building on fire. Um, there's the back of the box, um, which kind of gives an overview of the uh, the unit itself. Um, kind of tells you all the features of it and whatnot. Um, there's the top of the box right there. Um, and you can see it says cordless battery powered for easy neat installation now i'm not sure if that tells us that there was maybe a um like a line cord model of this um i'm pretty sure there wasn't but if there was one for some reason um because it said because it specifically specifies that this is a cordless detector um i'm not sure that that says that there may have been like a line cord model if there was a line cord model of these Holy shit, I want that. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty sure there wasn't. Um, I mean, these here, they're obscure enough as it is. So if there was a, if there was a, like a line cord model, those are prob they're probably like a little to none of those um, to really in existence. Um, yeah. And the bottom, you can see, is the same thing. And um, there's the side of the box there. And the other side, it's the same thing. So um, let's go ahead and open this thing up now. Um, pretty much just has this little flap here that opens like many other units of this same era. And you can see um, the box itself is in pretty rough shape. Um, and uh, Ben and Nathaniel's thought their boxes were in rough shape. But like, look at this one. Like there's a whole chunk missing. There's like tape over it. Um, I'm not, sh not sure if this was in like a flood or something or if it was just like under a bunch of shit and got crushed. I, I have no clue, but um, the box is not in very good shape at all. Um, but yeah, opening it up, um, you can see here is the unit right here. Um, it did not come with anything else. It pretty much just came with the unit inside the box um, as shown here. Um, didn't come with a manual, a California State Fire Marshal, a, a battery in it. Didn't come with anything um, except for the unit. Um, and if we take the unit out, you can see it's just kind of in this little holder here. Here is the UL tag that actually fell off the back of it. Um, you can see that that is where it was supposed to be. Um, the UL tag on Nathaniel's actually fell off too when he got it. Um, but uh, you can see there it is right there. Um, you can see issue number 
5,398, which interestingly enough is the exact same issue number on um, Ben's. So that's pretty interesting. Um, but let's go ahead and move the box out of the way and take a look at the unit itself. So um, give me a second. All right, so I decided to move the tripod down a little bit so we could get kind of a better view of the unit. Um, but here it is. You can see initially, um, you know, despite how obscure of units these are, it's kind of got a very sort of standard, stereotypical kind of smoke alarm design to it. You can see it's got these like four rows of vents here, um, pretty reminiscent to the Presto units as well as... Um, the decon units, which this is a later decon, but the um, the earlier decons, like the decon 300s and the 330s, um, oh, got it upside down. But um, the earlier the the you know the decon two or fuck the 300s and the 330s um, were a lot like this. They had like a square test button in the middle. Obviously, they were like a lot smaller. Um, I used to have a Radio Shack um, branded decon, but I gave it to one of my friends. But uh, yeah, they, they they have a very similar design to it to this, but they were obviously made much later. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the unit. Um, there is the back of the unit right there. Um, there is of course where the UL tag that fell off, um, you know, would normally be. And I'm um, right there. You're printed. You can see assembled in Hong Kong. Now. The cover's pretty interesting on these, um, which you may know because you've probably seen Ben and Nathaniel's videos of these. Um, the cover pretty much twists off like this. And you can see there's all sorts of like latches and whatnot. Um, so that the cover, you know, doesn't fall off, obviously. Um, you can see um, inside the cover there, there's a little bit of information probably pretty much about like the battery and, you know, the sort of radioactive warning. Um, you know, all that jazz. Um, but, uh, taking a look at the inside of the unit, which is probably the most interesting part of this, um, you can see the PCB has a very sort of simple design to it. There's really not much to it. Um, as you can see, there's where the battery goes. There is your, um, ionization chamber right there. It's kind of got like a bit of a dome-ish design to it. And, um, it's got these like six slots around it. Um, pretty interesting. And there's, of course, your red test button that presses down onto the sensor. Um, very reminiscent of the test buttons in the, uh, GE units, which, as you can see, um, if I open this up here, the buttons on the GEs also press down onto the chamber, except the ones on the GEs you can kind of see there, um, are actually quite a bit larger than the ones on the fire angels which it might be a bit hard to tell but they are quite a bit larger than the ones on the fire angels um and these ones say push to test unlike the fire angel which just says test um you know i just kind of try to keep it a bit simple um so um yeah and as you can see right there it has got a kobishi clb 27 like many other battery operated units of the same era and um there's a few other things as well. There's your um, sensitivity uh, switch. Um, and then there's some other pieces of circuitry right there. You got some resistors and whatnot. But yeah, there really isn't much to this at all. They just kind of kept it a very sort of simple kind of, you know, design. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, these were kind of one of the cheaper alarms sold, like... Like, when these were sold, they were sold for pretty cheap. I think even on um, one part of the box here, it says, like... Yeah, on the front of the box, it says, um, economically priced smoke and fire detector. So I'm assuming that these were kind of meant to be, like, very simple and just kind of, like, you know, budgeted alarms. Like, they weren't trying to be anything that interesting um, or, like, I guess, complex. Um, just very simple designed smoke alarms. Um, but yeah, there really is not much else to this thing. Um, I've pretty much showed you everything there is to show. Um, so let's go ahead and put a battery in it and give this thing a test. Um, of course, I'm sure you probably already know what it's going to sound like. Let's 
go ahead and put our battery in. I'm using one of these Amazon Basics batteries. Got like a whole bunch of them um, for Christmas a couple years back. Could I get the damn thing in? Ugh. There we go. Let's go ahead and push it in. There you go. And as you can see, it alarmed when um, I hooked up the battery. Um, so let's go ahead and put the cover on and do a little bit more of a, I guess, a formal test of it. Um, so here we go. Well, there you go. Um, you can see it's pretty much got that classic Kobishi sound to it. Um, the horn is a little bit rough sounding, um, but that's okay. It kind of sounds cool. Um, yeah, that's really, there's really not much more to this thing than that. Um, very, very interesting unit that there really is not a lot of info about. Um, go ahead and, um, for the hell of it, uh, we'll do a smoke test of it as well, because, uh, why not? So, let me zoom out a little bit. Um, alright, so, here we go, smoke test. Let's try that again. Hmm. That's weird. I thought this thing was more sensitive than that. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. Huh. Yeah, that is odd. Well, it still works when I press the button, but it ain't working with smoke. Now, this thing may be kind of like... I think I've used most of the smoke in this can, so let's see if I have, like, another can. Um, as you can see, it still sprays stuff out, but I don't think, like, the actual, like, aerosol or whatever it is is, like, still in there, um, so I can't really, like, set them off. Um, I don't know what I did with my other cans of smoke. I, I know I have more than this one can. Um... Uh, whatever. So I guess um, either that can of smoke is like running low or this thing just has pretty much lost all its sensitivity, which I mean, I can kind of see these things obviously like you are supposed to replace them every 10 years. Um, but this thing hasn't really been installed and I know I've tested it with smoke before and I remember it being like much more sensitive than that. So that's like kind of interesting. Um, yeah, let me make sure. I, I swear... I had another can of smoke in there. Really. Well, there we go. Okay, so I got some uh, smoke sentry in here. Let's see if this works better. Um, it might. I mean, I can kind of feel something in there. So uh, let's see if this works better. Huh? Yeah, that is odd. Yeah. So I guess it really has lost its sensitivity. Um, but, um, anyways, um, yeah, I've pretty much shown and done everything with this thing that I can um, in one video. So, yeah, uh, that is pretty much it. That is the, um, I should probably get the box. Uh, so that is the Can-Am Fire Angel model FA-1 smoke alarm. Oh, I zoomed out a bit too much there. Um, that is the Can-Am Fire Angel model FA-1 smoke alarm. Hope you guys enjoyed this video.